In this movie, we're going to talk about fitting sleeves properly so they look nice and feel good, adjusting the length of a pattern if the sleeve length is not correct for you, and refiguring how to make the increases or decreases if you cannot match gauge, because it isn't just a matter of changing row count. We're doing those increases and decreases, so it's a little more complicated. But it's very doable, and we're going to cover that all thoroughly. Getting the right sleeve length makes all the difference to comfortable, good-looking fit. The first thing that you need to know is what is your desirable sleeve length. Measure from the center back neck, indicated by the dot, across the shoulder, down the arm, to the wrist. No bending, no adding of ease, because that's taken care of another way. This is your ideal sleeve length. Adding the cuff will add plenty of ease, and so that's what we'll do. We'll just knit to this length. Now we need to compare your ideal sleeve length with the sleeve length given in the pattern. That length may be stated in the pattern, but if it is, it is probably the length of this piece, and that's not all we need to know. But it is useful information. We do need to know the length of this sleeve above the cuff. If it is not stated, divide the total row count for the sleeve by the row gauge, and that will give you the answer. In this particular pattern, there are 106 sleeve rows given. 106 rows divided by a row gauge of 6 per inch means the sleeve is 17.6666. In other words, 17.7 or 17.5, depending how you want to figure it, inches long. But we measured from the center back neck, so half of the width of the back also contributes to that distance. In the sweater we're knitting, the back is 23 inches wide, so half of that is 11.5. Adding the actual sleeve length to half of the width of the back gives us a 29 inch length. So if your measurement, the ideal length, was longer or shorter than that, you need to adjust. The instructions for this particular sleeve are to increase or decrease every four rows 25 times, then every three rows twice, and we want the identical number of increases and decreases. We just want to lengthen or shorten the sleeve. So let's suppose the sweater fits you, but you have longer arms than this. In fact, quite a lot longer. You need to add three inches in length to the sleeve. You will need 18 more rows at this stitch gauge to get those three extra inches. Our instructions have us increasing every four rows 25 times. But if for 18 of those 25 times, we were to decrease or increase every five rows, there we would have our extra 18 rows. So the revised instructions, every five rows 18 times, every four rows seven, every three rows 31, this is the same number of increases or decreases, so the sleeve will be very much the same shape, just stretched out. Now we'll look at an example of shortening the sleeve two inches. We would need 12 fewer rows. In this case, we will decrease or increase every four rows fewer times, 12 fewer times. That leaves 13 times we'll do that, and then 15 times that we will work every three rows. Again, the same number of stitch increases or decreases, but it will shorten the shape, keeping it basically the same, just as though you squished it, which is exactly what we want. So if you are matching gauge correctly and just need a size change, it's quite straightforward. If your gauge didn't match, it's best to use the magic formula. I found this free calculator online. You can also accomplish this with a pencil and paper and a calculator, and there are some apps you can buy that do it. But let us suppose that neither your stitch or row gauge match perfectly, and you've already performed the steps designated in video two where I explain how to adjust for gauge. So you know how many stitches you want at the top 
and at the bottom. You've already multiplied your real row gauge of 5.5 per inch by the 16 inch length that you would like to knit and you know you need 88 rows in total. So you go to the calculator and here's what it looks like. It doesn't resemble our sleeve, I know. It's showing a set in sleeve, but this particular calculator is for the portion of the sleeve below the red dotted line. So that does look like our sleeve. Now we just need to fill in all the blanks. The bottom number is the number that we cast on for the wrist or bind off at the bottom of the wrist, whichever way we're going. They call it the minimum number of stitches. At the left, it asks for the row count. So we put in 88 rows for this example. At the top, fill in the number of stitches at the top of our sleeve called the maximum number of stitches here. That's all the information the app needs. So just hit calculate now at the right and your instructions will appear to the right of the sleeve diagram and to the left of the calculate button. I've tried it several times and it works perfectly. I know that's not very legible on your screen so here's what it says. One at each end of every fourth row seven times every fifth row 12 times. So you would replace the pace asked for by the pattern of increases and decreases with those instructions. Now before I go, let's talk a little bit about knitting direction and why it doesn't matter and you get to choose. Basically it's because you can make the same sleeve shape working from either direction. If you prefer to increase, you can start at the wrist and work up to what will be the top of the sleeve at the shoulder. If you work top down, the advantage is that you can hang the edge of the garment and seam at the same time as you begin knitting the sleeve, and you can use full-fashioned decreases, which allow for a neat and easy seam later, and are faster than full-fashioned increases. One additional thing that I like is that when you're working the ribbing, you have the rest of the fabric to hold on to, and you just ladder back to that if you are working ribbing by hand. But there is no particular superiority of one method over the other. Just do with the one you like the best. Now you can have a perfect sleeve. In case you're viewing this video out of context, it's part of the series pictured here. The sweater shown at right is the one that we're all knitting and we knit it in a size that finishes to 46 at the chest, bust, and hip. It can have the tunic style ribbing shown or traditional ribbing. This video series is entirely free for you to enjoy. It's based on the most basic of many styles in this book, The Answer Ladies Machine Knitting Notebook. The book has the same kind of sweater in 18 sizes and two gauges, plus some additions and changes you can make that include modified drop shoulders, turning it into a cardigan, short sleeves, special necklines, adding cables, adding darts, and so on. You can read about it in more detail and buy it from my website at the link in the program notes if it interests you.